All right, thickened uh, epoxy is applied. I'll say it again, thickened epoxy is applied and uh, getting ready to put these two halves together. I'm gonna see if I can set this camera up so you can watch that. And I gotta go get another pair of gloves. I'll do my best. There I am, I'm still here. I had to go get another pair of gloves. In just a second to get them on. And these gloves are not cooperating. It's been on my workbench all summer. There we go, got it. I've got this little trick where I blow into these things to expand them. Can't do that with the mask on. Here we go. Just like that. did too. More plant. Just trying to decide which ones I want to use. slight camera adjustment here and hopefully I don't get this mess all over my camera. I hope that's better. If you decide to build a boat, lots and lots of clamps. Because you're going to need them. <laughs> These are some ones I got from Harbor Freight and they actually work pretty good. And that's not a plug for Harbor Freight by the way. I'm just saying they work pretty good. We are just going to clamp the ever loving daylights out of this thing. I got some more of these somewhere. Okay. Told you. Still squeezing out that epoxy, so we gotta get more plants on this thing. Many as I can find. There we go. Let's see, let's get one here, right in this little corner. Yeah. Remember Michael Keaton, Mr. Mob? 220, 221, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Forgot about these. A little cheapy from Home Depot. Need some out here on this end. It will work, boys and girls. It will work. I think I've got enough epoxy in this thing. And I'm glad I only did one at a time because I'd hate to be trying to tackle 
both of these. There's actually two of these. One of the times enough. When I'm off camera, trying to keep you entertained a little bit because I know you can't see everything. I don't have a person running the camera, so um, just doing the best I can to show you as much as I can. This is what I got so far, and I'm probably gonna get a couple more plants on it, and then we're gonna let that sit for the night. Okay, so this was a little tight. Ah, ah, ah. Just more editing I'll have to do later to speed this part up. I love editing. Can you tell by the sound of my voice? I love video editing. Actually, it's a labor of love. I love doing it for these videos. I really do. But I am gonna have, I am gonna have some fun with you. All right, this here, what it looks like now, we're just gonna let all this pop, Ew, you know what? I really need to wipe out that excess right there. That's fine. I'd rather do it now than to have to sand that stuff out later. And boy, I thought I got the bottom of that thing with the uh, resin, I didn't. Yeah, dead gummit. You know what I'm gonna have to do? Get as much of that excess out of there as we can. But we'll push that up on that little dry area. And uh, hopefully we'll get that coated to where it'll be waterproof. I'll probably have to just come back and um, later on and put some resin on that. I thought I got all four, or five, six, one, two, one, two, three, four, five sides, six sides on these. I thought I got all six sides. I didn't. I missed that bottom. We'll get it. This thing will be good and waterproof. Not going to have any water seeping in edge of that plywood. I'm sitting here talking and I'm not showing you where I'm wiping this edge off. Man, okay. That's what I've been doing while I've been sitting here flapping my gums. I've been wiping this edge, wiping that seam right there, trying to get all that excess epoxy out of there. Could probably trim it with a knife later on. Uh, let's see here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little paintbrush and just try to dab some up underneath this clamp where I can't get my fingers in there. And, uh, oh, looky there. Still got the label on it from Home Depot. All right, whatever. You know, the worst part is that's the part that touches the bottom, that little side that I missed. But we'll just have to take extra care. To make sure that thing's waterproof. Okay. Get in there. Get in behind these clamps where my fingers can't go. All right, and almost done for the night. And I think we're just gonna have to. So that is the best I could do and call it a night. Well, I sure hope that doesn't bond to that clamp. <laughs> Man, maybe I'll take it apart and put it back together. Uh, maybe I should do that. Uh, let's see. You know, I did not put wax paper down there either, but I think it'll be all right. All right, those brushes, those are little cheap chipping brushes there. Get them at Home Depot for a dime a dozen. Not worried about it. 
I just don't want to bond my clamps to that wood. Because this uh, thickened epoxy sticks to everything. But let's see, I think we'll be able to work that stuff off there. I'm going to put a knife blade down in between that just to separate it there. Just so we don't have that problem. All right. Okay, folks. Um, ah, yeah, I got my mask on again. So, okay, I'm going to call it it for the night. I'm going to call that good. And, um, oh, wow. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Oh my goodness, man, I got this epoxy all over my right hand, and I'm going to really have to clean up my base of my camera. I can't set this down. It's going to stick. All right, see you next time. Okay, folks, welcome back. Back on the GoPro here. And so, um, what I've got going on here is, remember I told you I had a piece of uh, one-inch cypress that I was going to have to attach to this uh, Maranti plywood to give it strength uh, and also so I'll have a uh, wide enough surface to mount the outboard so what I did tonight you know if you can see that there I also want a mechanical attach point or, or a mechanical attachment as well as um, uh, bonding it with the uh, uh, the epoxy so what I did was I drill some holes and counter something we're going to put some stainless steel screws it's two four six eight there's going to be ten uh stainless steel screws uh they're number eight by one inch and uh so they just give a little bit of additional strength but i'm not finished with this piece of cypress just yet um what i've got to do here is um hang on let me get the gopro going here again Screens go dark on these for some reason. There we go. Okay, what I got to do is just touch them. All right. Uh, but anyway, I tried shaking it there, as you noticed. But anyhow, uh, what I've got to do is notch out right here. And uh, the reason for that is, is I've got to have a place to attach the sidewalls and the, and, or, you know, the gunnels, which is the sides of the boat. And I've got to have a, uh, a means of attaching the structure um uh, and, and actually attaching the, the transom to the uh gunnels uh, so that we don't have a weak point so that we won't have any cracking out right here uh whenever the boat is finished and put together on the water of course you know once you get out there on the water start hitting waves and chop and you know start putting some stresses on uh the frame there so got to make sure we address that now and uh you know you kind of got to be able to think maybe you know two or three steps ahead and so pretty well have uh, these pieces here uh, that i said i was going to attach to the middle and they're over here on my toolbox let me put this down and um, of course these pieces right here 14 inches apart like i mentioned transom's going to attach back here and uh, then we're going to attach to the frame I, uh, the way i got this worked out i think i've got uh, a rib running here and i might have a rib running up here and then i'm going to you know cut out the uh the holes here to kind of help try to save some weight uh, but anyway that's what i've got going on tonight man i tell you what i'm glad i did not go ahead and epoxy this thing in because uh, when i got to looking at it and i, and I realized um that i did not have a way to attach the gunnels and i've got additional cutting and shaping and notching to do to uh, this piece of one inch cypress right here and because um, i'm going to actually have on top of this thing i'm going to lean this up against me so it doesn't fall over i'm going to have like a six inch cap uh, a rail um, it's going to be horizontal it's going to sit up here and it's going to run the length of the boat and go all the way up to the casting deck on the front and then the back here i'll probably um, have like a little two inch piece just to kind of close this area out a little bit make it look a little bit neater um, the um, those braces that i just showed you uh, so you find the center here yeah this is about the center line right here so i'm going to have one of those braces here another one of the braces is going to attach over here and then, then like i said those are going to attach to the ribs of the boat and uh just uh you know still got a lot of work to do got a lot of uh, detail work to do and so that's one thing that 
uh, you want to be careful of when you do something like this, and that is, uh, you know, always plan ahead. Always uh, try to stay a couple of steps ahead, and uh, you know, don't uh, build yourself into a corner. And you know, I could have gotten a hurry and uh, uh, epoxied this thing together, and then, oh no, you know, now what am I going to do? How am I going to attach the uh, the uh, the gunnels, the side rails, and everything? So um, it's just sometimes you just got to stop and uh, sit in the chair and look at it and it's kind of what I did here I was just kind of sitting down in the chair here in the garage and and just kind of uh, uh, looking at it and say okay now what have I got to do to make this happen so anyway that's all I have for tonight and uh, once I get all of these pieces cut out and uh, notched and and uh, get them like I want them like they need to be uh, then I will get back with you and I'll post that video and uh, as always God bless you, and uh, just remember, uh, God's in control, and we will see you next time. Okay, so finally got these corners cut out right here. Uh, got this notched out on both sides, so we can attach the uh, uh, the side or well, the sides of the uh, both the gunnels, the uh, and of course the uh, the, the top rail and uh, the cap that, that's going to go. Uh, on top of the gunnel there. I'm going to have this wide enough. Uh, I think I'm going to make it about five inches wide so that I will have like uh, uh, some footing there when I'm stepping in and out of the boat. And so we've got that. Like I said, we've got this notched out. We've got this piece here ready uh, to bond to this uh, transom plate right here. So once I get that done, I will. Uh, Get back with you and uh, the Dr. Pepper there is not going to be a part of the structure so I just had to have a place to set that so anyway I'll get back to you more to come okay folks we're recording um, might get a little bit of wind noise across the mic because you know once again you know winds have picked up it's just screaming like crazy here in north texas but anyway uh, as you saw in the uh, still photos there um, just a few moments ago and uh, hopefully i can get all this edited to show you that uh, we had this piece uh, clamped and now it is bonded uh, clamps are off as you can see and uh really happy with the way that came out and uh maybe kind of get a little side view there you can see what's going on i'm not going to stand this piece up right now because I'm trying to get these pieces attached i've got to have an attachment point uh for these pieces right here and i'm just going to kind of put this in place and hold it by hand kind of see what's going on and uh so anyway that has to attach like so and um uh, I've got to have a way to attach that piece to uh, the transom. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm working on right now. And uh, once I get done with all that, then I will uh, uh, post some more still photos here in the video. And uh, also we'll do a little brief video and just kind of show you the, the finished product there. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching and uh, I'll be right back okay i'm back again I, um, I shot that last little segment this afternoon i did not have time to bond any of these pieces uh, to attach them to the transom uh, it was getting kind of late and i had to get ready to go to work so anyway went in did my uh, eight hour shift i'm back home now everybody's asleep in the house uh, but i'm still not going to uh, attach these pieces tonight got to make a few little changes to uh, all these pieces here uh, one thing i forgot to do uh, even though I, i've got this angle right here kind of get a little bit closer i got this angle cut what i forgot to do is there is also an angle right here that i forgot to allow for not a big deal not it's something i can easily recover from um, i won't even have to make new pieces uh, basically all i'll have to do is uh, bring this down a little bit go ahead and make that cut you can't see that but this this is this is beveled right here it's at an angle it's because the transom is not going to be sitting at 90 degrees it's actually going to be angled back 
and uh, I forgot to allow for that when I made these pieces. Not a big deal. Like I said, we can uh, easily fix that. Um, thick and epoxy, uh, man, you can recover from anything. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead, cut that angle to the bottom of all these pieces. And on these two pieces, I'll just uh, bond a couple of pieces of wood up here to make up the difference on these right here. Um, these little smaller pieces right here, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll run a little strip across here because the floorboard of the boat is going to attach to the top here anyway. So I actually do need something running across the uh, width of the transom for that floorboard to sit on top of. So um, that's kind of a little blessing in disguise right there. As it turns out, these pieces right here uh, would have had to cut them off here at the top anyway. So no big deal. Nothing we can't recover from. I don't have to remake anything. Just uh, like I said, man, thickened epoxy, you know, it's a lifesaver. So anyway, um, I'm sure all of you are aware, you know, that we've seen a, um, you know, an increase in the, in the, uh, uh, the number of people getting sick, you know, here in this pandemic and all. And, um, you know, we continue to pray. We continue to pray for an end to it. But uh, one of the things that um, um, I, I guess, you know, I convicted by the Holy Spirit of is, you know, to make sure that we're praying uh, that when vaccine, cure, whatever comes along, is that God receives the glory because that's the purpose of miracles. And there's only one purpose for miracles from God, and that is uh, for God to receive the glory. And uh, so I know the next question that someone will ask is, well, why does God need the glory? Well, let me tell you something. God does not need one single thing from us. When we give God the glory, when we praise him, when we thank him, that is for the Christian. That is our expression of love to God. That is how we show our love to God. It's one thing to say, I love Jesus, but it's another thing to demonstrate that love. And that's how we demonstrate our love. God is giving him the glory and the thanks and the praise because he is our creator and he deserves that. And so anyway, when, like I say, when we pray uh, over all of this and pray for these people, my gosh, pray for these people. Uh, you know, we're still losing people. I lost a friend at work. Um, about three weeks ago and then uh, just a little while later his his wife also passed away and so but we, we got to continue to pray for these people pray for these families and pray and ask god in, in this plague and uh he will and uh he'll he'll, he'll work through uh someone he, he works through people um you know we'll like i said there will be a, a vaccine there will be a cure uh, uh it'll come along it'll happen um but uh, right now we're just in a time of testing here in, in this nation and in this world. And so um, one last point that I wanted to make, um, you know, about, you know, why we give glory to God. And it, you know, Jesus said that if you love me, you will obey my teaching. And uh, so, like I said, it's, it's, again, it's an expression of love. It's how we demonstrate our love. And, and let me kind of uh, give you a, um, uh, an illustration of that. Um, when you tell your spouse uh, that you love her, or, or if, if there's any women watching this, if when you tell your husband you love him, um, you know, it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to show it and to demonstrate it. And you you demonstrate that in the way that you you uh, you treat uh, your husband, the way you treat your uh, your wife, the way you treat your spouse. And and uh, so, like I said, it's one thing to say it. It's important to say it, uh, don't get me wrong, but it's also important to let them uh, see it in you. Let them see you know, your love for this person that God has chosen to be, uh, chosen for you to be your wife or your husband. So uh, anyway, you know, and I'm, I'm, and, and I'm addressing this to, you know, uh, to men and women, you know, in case there's any women out there watching this right now. But uh, anyway, that, that's my message for tonight. Uh, once I get this uh, transom piece, uh, uh, this transom plate put together and get all these pieces 
get them all cut the way they need to be cut and get everything bonded together, then um, I will, uh, well, I'll, I'll uh, put that in another video. And so, um, anyway, until next time, uh, just remember, you know, God loves you. God is in control. I know right now, uh, boy, it's, 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 it's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on right now, but he really is. He really is in control. And, and remember that God does love you and he wants a relationship with you. And uh, so um, behave and be blessed. And now it is time for me to be gone. And thank you for watching.